flooded with this conviction. The last of my inhibitions flee, and I quicken my pace. The outside. I've done it. I found a way out, and I took it, and I only looked back once. I have never realized how much I wanted this until now. Freedom. It's as intoxicating as any drug. A rush of adrenaline through my body. Wild Pia and Timid Pia merge. Fear is overwhelmed by heady exhilaration. I am one. I am whole. I am free. I am so captivated by the emotions inside me that I don't even see the boy until we collide. That was an excerpt from Origin by Jessica Corey, which is one of the books we're going to be reviewing by the author today. Hello, my name is JT, and welcome to the Good Read Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the podcast. It's very good to be talking to all of you guys. To my family who's been listening to me through speaker. To my family who's been listening to me through YouTube. Um, been a lot busy. And also my family on um, on Stitcher too. All my family who just happens to have very terrible recreational ideas and decides to tune into my podcast. It's a pleasure to be talking to all of you guys. Today is July 16th. I happen to be sitting in the library with heavy expectations of a great day ahead of me. Um, how are you doing today? What's been going on with you in your life? What books have you read? What book have you read recently? What ebook have you read? You know what? Uh, I've been, I read a study a while ago that said that generally when somebody buys an ebook, they generally don't read it. But if they buy an actual hardcover copy book, odds are they'll actually read it. And I guess it's because when you have a hard book sitting around, you know, it's hard to kind of ignore it. And one thing about um, ebooks, I guess, is ebooks are hard because they're in a they're in a platform, and by that I mean your cell phone or your tablet, where half the time you're going there for something else other than just reading. Unless you happen to have like one of those little Nook tablets that all it can do is just pull up books, which I would never buy one of those. If I ever am going to buy an electronic tablet, it would be something that could do more than just that. But now, to each his own. Um, yeah, I'm always curious to see what you guys are reading. If you guys want to tell me, you know, talk to me. You know, we can turn this. This is a podcast, but it's also a book club in itself. So if you want to tell me what you've been reading lately that you're hiding from me because you're scared I'm going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you if you're a man, if you happen to be a grown man who's been reading fairy books and ballet books because I read that stuff too. If you can tweet me at JT's Boldest Dream, that's J-T-S-B-O-L-D-E-S-T-D-R-E-A-M. And on Instagram, you can tweet me at JTS. I mean, at Instagram, you can insta me at JTS, B O L D E S T D R E A M. And all day, I'm up all day with this. I do this podcast and I also do another podcast. So, of course, I have the option to do a lot of little different stuff and whatever, whatnot. Um, today, we have a, a pretty tight knit schedule. First, we're going to have like a discussion moment where I just talk to you guys about what's going on, you know, as far as literary, as far as my work and my writing goes. Then after that, I'm going to give you two reviews on what two books by this fantastic author called Jessica Corey, who I have actually contacted to have an interview with on this podcast. So if you're a fan of hers, you know, be prepared. Um, one book we have by her is called Origin. Um, very fantastic book. Basically science fiction, somewhat I would kind of consider it diastopic, but the catch is it's kind of set in the past, so it's kind of going to live a different way. But we have Origin, and there's another book that she has called Kalahari, set in Southern Africa. So we're going to talk about those two things today. But in the meantime, let's have a little uh, just stop, kind of a little bit. Of, let's have a little bit of a discussion between us about what's been going on in my life. So, um, first off. Everything's been pretty cool. Uh, I've just been busy doing whatever else I could. Um, I've been doing a lot of writing, of course. I've been doing a lot of podcasting. Um, and I want to apologize to you guys, my faithful listeners, for 
this past two days, I wasn't able to deliver a podcast to you on Thursday that was up to par. But it's just I've been so busy trying to get the right cell phone. Um, I went through five cell phones in these last three months. It's been pretty stressful. Like I've literally been had to pick it. I've literally literally been having to pick up girls' numbers with a notepad and a pencil when I go to the mall. Like it's it's terrible. Also, as far as writing, of course, as I always said, my two books are on Smash Brothers, Smash Words right now. I'm a highs, a vampire story, and. Black Wings, uh, which is the preview for my story that's coming out on September 4th, my birthday. Um, I haven't really done that. I haven't taken that much time to inform you of what the books are about, what inspired the books, etc., etc. So I'll decide to tell you a little bit more now. Um, first thing, I guess I'll start with Amahai's Vampire Story. Amahai's Vampire Story. This book, basically what it was made of was, um, it started two, but I started a year ago. I just got kicked out of college, um, $30,000 in debt, ran away to my grandmother, to my aunt's house. I'm basically homeless until I get to her place. I'm sitting in her, um, I'm sitting in her guest room watching Interview with the Vampire, you know, and God bless Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise because those are two very, very, very sexy men. I'm just saying, like, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to lie, but I'll give a hand clap for them. They are two very, very sexy men. I'll give them that. I felt so so in- I felt so insecure watching that movie. I was like, "Wow, do they make humans like that?" Wow. But um, I was there. I was watching the show, and when I was watching the show, watching the movie actually, um, I just had an idea come to my head about vampires because I remember watching the scene where Brad Pitt was still a slave plantation owner, and you know, he had, he had a very pretty house nigga, by the way. I forgot her name, but she was very pretty. I'm talking about the one black girl that he's bloody sucked just before all the other blacks were about to come and burn down the plantation. He came out holding her in her arms, holding her in his arms. And I was watching the movie and I thought, why don't they have any good black vampire stories? And, you know, they had Blade for Marvel, but to me, Marvel was... Blade really wasn't all that to me. You know, I thought it was kind of... I mean, I never read the, the comic. I just saw the movie. The movie was cool. The movie was raw. Pretty much any movie with Wesley Snipes in it is raw. But I just didn't think it was... I didn't think the concept of Blade was all that. I didn't think it was that cool. But mine, I was thinking, like, why don't we ever take the time to have it where somebody becomes a vampire who used to be a slave? Somebody gets the option to become a vampire who used to work in the plantation, so he already has this anger and this hate built into him. And so we to the author, Amelia Atwater Rhodes. I remember reading that in her book, um, the vampire series she had, which was called Forest of the Night. In her series, what would happen was vampires would breed. You would have certain families of vampires who would breed a certain type of vampire for certain traits that they favor in their line. Like he, she had one called the Khalil line. And in Khalil's line, he bred vampires who were either very artistic, very beautiful, and generally a combination between the two. But then you have the silver line, and they bred for power. They bred for you to be mighty and strong. So here you have one who breed for aesthetics, and here you have one who breed for a power. So I, the concept that I use in my book was the vampire who freed my vampire, which is called Mahai, is the vampire who turned my vampire, who turned my nigga into a vampire. What his thing was, he was breeding for power, but the catch was, is the power can only come through the power can only come through strong emotions. You know, stronger emotions make the stronger vampire. It's not just a thing of physicality, but it's almost a thing of your soul. And because you have this character who's been snatched from his home in Western Africa, he's been locked in a ship, crossed, for, uh, crossed the seas for three months with shit and piss falling on him. Now he's been working in the fields for three three years, being, being beat by whips and chained and eating shit on the stick. When you have a man that goes through all this, then you have a character who... <clears throat> then you have a character who he has so much he has so much just emotions built up into this volcanic energy that it could come in it makes him a powerful vampire just by that just by all the factors just by all the experience that he's dealt with he makes him a, a mightier person <clears throat> so after that I decided that okay that's the book I'm going to do that's what I'm going to do I wrote it and it took me a long time to finish it because at the time I was writing like four or five different books. I wrote that one. I was writing this one about Helios, the sun god. Um, 
Then I was writing one about Black Wings, which is the book I have right now. That's my main book. I'm going to talk about that one next. And I really didn't get to finish until about October because I just was so busy trying to fix, focus on working that one and focus on working this one and focus on working that one. But now I've gotten to a point now where I'm like, okay, you know what? I just want to release it. I want to release it to the world and I want everybody to see. And if you are a writer... If you happen to be a writer, if you happen to be an artist, if you happen to be any area where you're creative, you know how that feels. You know, there are some of you guys who are, I'd say, more shy and um, introverted, so you might not like everybody to see your your work, your work and your art because it's close to your heart. But for those of you guys who do share that same passion and that love for attention and also for praise like I do, you know you have those moments where you'll be working on your art and you'll be crafting it and crafting it and crafting it and crafting it and you just have this urge to get it out to the world and let everybody see it and enjoy what you're doing because I sat on that story almost basically a year, almost a year and a half before I had the, I just said, you know what, F it, I'm just going to put it online fully and see what everybody thinks because <clears throat> When I know that I've written something really great, and I know that I've written something really powerful and influential, then I can't just sit down and let it catch dust. You know, not saying it could catch dust because it was an ebook, but you get you get the expression. Like, I can't just sit it catch. I can't just let it sit down and let it be ignored. I feel like if I had this great story and nobody knows about it, then that's a shame on me because I have this greatness that I'm not letting the world see. That's the same way I feel about you. You probably have some greatness that you're not letting the world see, whether it's through writing. I know a lot of my people who listen to this are writers, whether it's through writing, whether it's through talking to people, whether it's through you have your own gift. You have a way of words with people. You have your own gift. You have your own lane. And that's how I felt about with this book. I just wanted to get it out there. and wanted everybody to see my creativity. So, you know, I hope you check that out. It's on Smashwords. You can find links to it um, on my Facebook. If you go to my Facebook or even just message me on Twitter and message me on Twitter and Instagram and I can send you a link to the stories and you can go check that one out. I'm a high is a vampire story. The second one, this one is my baby. This one is my baby. I, I love this one. This one really touches my heart. I love this one a lot is Black Wings. And with Black Wings, the reason why I'm so passionate about this book is because it's kind of like a a fantasy trajectory of how my whole life was. You know, I took the graph of my life of how it was, me growing up, me going through certain situations, me having to deal with uh, bullying, me having to deal with the pressures of being, you know, just a nerd in the you know, black community who I felt ostracized. Um, me dealing with my mother who was dating an abusive man and all this other stuff, you know, I took all those aspects of my life and turned it into a story. And then I added fantasy to it. Then I added this to it. So I wanted it to be something that everybody could enjoy. And what happened was what ended up becoming the result of that was, is, you know, this story and, you know, we'll see what it's like. You know, I I got distracted a girl walked by, but. The story is basically a a boy who finds out that he's actually a sheet, which is a fairy, a fairy prince. He is a fairy prince. And what was funny is um, I was actually talking to the author, the author I was supposed to interview on Thursday, Alan Fewen Jones. And the reason I wanted to interview him and I wanted to bring him to you was because he actually wrote a book um, called Fairy Path. And I love fairies and books like that in influenced my imagination that I have for fairies and he was like man I, I am so surprised that I'm so surprised I'm trying to I'm trying to make a British accent let me think how, how do you make a British accent oh well, Lord mate I'm so surprised I'm so surprised that uh, to me the boy who liked my work I'm generally I never wrote for, he, he told me because he was talking about um the audience he had for fairy path and he was like I never had an art a male audience for fairy path or even from from America generally um I'd have young teenage girls but not a lot from America not a grown ass man and I was like yeah I know it's pretty strange I know it's odd I said I'm the anomaly and I'm the anomaly that I really do enjoy fairy fiction and stuff like that and I'm a grown ass African American male but so the anomaly is me but I took what happened was I took the concepts of fairy princes and Harry Potter, even that kind of all that little ideas, and also the kind of concept that tied the Holly Black Cat and Tide. 
I took that and I merged it with urban life, with the ghetto, with the streets, with the projects. I merged that into like this hot gumbo bowl of just creativity. And I promise you, I promise my people, you guys will truly enjoy it. It'll be an experience worth eternally waiting for. Um, I put my heart and soul into this book. I remember... And it was an interesting thing when I was writing this book because I had I had moments where I would write a certain passage or a certain story or a certain paragraph and I would really have to connect with myself and see if this was something that I truly innerly approved of. Like I'd have to really connect with myself and say with every single name, with every single detail, I was like, does this name really touch me? Does this story really touch me? Even the even the antagonist, the evil guys, when I have the antagonist, I would say does this sound like the name of somebody who I would want to fuck up on site if I saw him again? Does this sound like the name of somebody who really do look like somebody could go to jail? Do I really connect with this? Do I really connect with that? You know, like, that's the funny thing about writing is when you're writing, in a lot of ways, you really are creating a world. And it can take so much out of you because, like, I, I'm going to ask you, have you ever had this experience? Have you ever had this experience where you were creating something, maybe a piece of art, maybe painting a picture, and your brain just started to hurt and throb crazily for no other reason other than just because you've been using that creative side of your mind so much that it's starting to hurt. You've been visualizing, you've been imagining, you've been putting yourself in the scenario, and your brain just starts to hurt because it's like, damn, I can't take that much more of this. I wonder, I was wondering if you've been through that. Because I... I had a lot of those moments writing this book, a lot of those moments, and, you know, it was an odd experience, but at the same time, it, it was worth it. It was worth it to get to the point to where I can tell you that it's ready for you and it's waiting for you, and the preview that I have online at Smashwords as well, and also on Amazon, it's a preview just to let you guys know what I'm working with, just to let you guys know the creativity that I possess, and what book is waiting, how, what book is really waiting for you guys soon. So I really want you to go check that out, um, Black Wings. It's a very, 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 very niche written novel, and I want you guys to enjoy it. I, it's 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 two things I'm more pass. It's two things I'm the most passionate about in my life is interacting with you and also writing. And either of those two can break my heart, and also and all and also both of those two can complete it. So. I beg that you go see it. I promise you'll enjoy it. You know. Now, also what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about book reviews. So, if you don't know, there is an author called just Corey. And look at Corey. She has written two books. One called Origin and one called Lahari. And I'm going to review both of them. So, let's get I'll just hop right into it. So, the first one we have here is Origin. Um, very good book. Remember, this is Corey. It was released November 2012. Yes, November 2012. Very, very good book. And just to talk a little bit about Jessica Corey, she's a very, very uh, beautiful young woman, you know, of Syrian and Scottish descent. She was born and raised in a small, re- remote location in Georgia called Tokokoa. She earned her bachelor's degree in English from Tokokoa Falls College, and she still lives there to this day. And she also writes and coaches youth soccer. Now, the interesting thing about the author, in a sense, is most authors that I know generally got degrees in writing. Most authors that I know generally got degrees in English. I mean, in English, writing, literature, history, stuff like that that could put you in the literary world. And it's always interesting seeing like that certain trend that they all have. Like, it's fascinating. And with her, she also wrote another book called... Um, I don't remember, what was it called? The other one I just read she had. Um, ooh, 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 brain fart. At a brain fart moment. But um, she, she wrote another book. I can't remember the name of it. But she wrote Origin of Kalahari. Now, um, with, these, the, with Origin, Origin is a very interesting book. Origin is a book basically about a young girl named Pia. She's 17 years old. And in this world, she is basically, theoretically the first immortal human to live and the setting is in a science lab a science lab in the middle of a tropical jungle and 
the people who engineered her to live or set the situation up to where she could be born immortal. She was born from a human mother and a human father, but they engineered her through a generation of five families or whatever, whatnot of injections and stuff like that. I don't want to spoil her too much for you, but she was basically engineered to be immortal. Um, you know, she's perfect. That everybody around her tells her she's perfect. They told her she's basically the symbol of perfection for the future of humanity. Um, everybody's talking about it. Everybody calls her perfect. Everything she does, they say she's perfect. Even her, even how she looks facially, she has the most beautiful face because her parents are two people who were hand picked because of their beauty or because of their talents and um, and athletic capability. So, you have this young lady and. It's a very interesting book. The thing I like about it is it introduced a concept that I hadn't thought about before. I've, I've always thought about this concept. Like I've always thought about the concept of immortality and how far humans are going to go to get immortality. And prior to me reading this book, I was talking to my aunt about this and about the subject of immortality. And I had told her that I said the, the best thing about being born in 1991 is that I know that before I die, they're going to have had a cure or some type of pill, some type of medicine or remedy to stop aging or at least extend aging. And I'm so glad that I was here to see it. And this book makes me think about that because it shows you to it shows you if you when you're reading the book and you get into it really, really well, it shows you the, to the what far to the extent people are going to go to not die. And the funny thing about it is, is I always say like we in this country, this is, I don't want to get into that part. Cause that'd be too, that'd be too off topic. I'm going to stick on the book, but so it shows you how far we're going to go to for not dying or achieving immortality. And the interesting thing I think about that too, when I read this book is if we did achieve immortality, what would it solve? Because truthfully, if we did achieve immortality, really, if we did have it, I'll be honest with you, most people probably wouldn't know for like the first 100 or 200 years. And then when we did have it, we would probably we'd have to we really would have to start a Mars colonization project because too many people are effing too freaking fast to have immortal people living around like that would be really bad. So, you know, it is what it is. But it made me think about that. I like the theme of the book. I like the storyline. I like the name. The only thing I didn't like about the book, what I didn't like about the book was the boy that she's interested in, I'm not going to say his name, but the boy that she's interested in, there's a revelation about who his real father is in the book, and to me, the revelation was so weak, like, I, I thought it was just a very weak revelation, like, it didn't shock me, but I... Even if, I mean, I do, but in, you know, in books, it can be hard to make a plot shocking or whatever. Truthfully, Jessica might not have been trying to make me feel shocked. She might have just been trying to make me or you feel like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Okay, it's going, it's going, it's going. But to me, when I have a revelation in the book, I love the feeling of, man, I just got shocked. I just got shocked into a moment of, man, my mind is blown. You know, like just to give an example, kind of jump off topic. That's what made the others with Nicole Kidman, that movie, the others. That's what made that movie so significant was because the revelation at the end of the movie was crazy. Nobody saw that coming. I didn't see that coming. That was the first time I saw a revelation like that. That was amazing. And to this day, I will always say the others is the best ghost movie I have ever seen in my life. So, with Origin, it was a very good book. Other than that revelation, I think it was a good book. I really recommend that you go see it. Origin by Jessica Corey. Her last name is spelled K-H-O-U-R-Y. And hopefully, if you can speak the English language, you should know how to spell Jessica. Because God forbid you have never... I, I hope God is blessing me to Jessica. There are so many Jessica in the world. So many Jessicas. Um, anyway, so... Um, what was I going to say? It's not out of my mind. It's not out of my mind. Oh, yeah. Next book that she wrote, and I want to review this, is also called Kalahari. Now, Kalahari, interesting book. Um, Kalahari is basically a book. I haven't finished this book. I'm only 30 pages in. I'm just going to give you for what I've taken from it just after the couple of pages that I read. Kalahari is a book set in Southern Africa 
with a young lady and her father who's a very an- animal sympathist. You know, he he's against poaching. I mean, her father's against poaching. Her father's against anything that has to do with cruelty to animal wildlife. And these four or five children from these five children, who are all teenagers, come as like a like a tour trip to Africa. And you know, it's kind of hard for the for the young lady because she's not really the young lady. She's not really that socialized with other people. You know, she's not really that socialized. I'm talking about the central character. The central character, she's not really that socialized with other kids her age. So when she's dealing with them, there's some kind of, you know, uh, uh. She's like one of those type of people who, you know what I'm talking about. One of those type of people who's, like her father, she's an animal scientist. But the problem is, she's more closer to animals, has easier to with animals than with people. So you see that a lot in the book. Now, granted, I'm only 30, 40 pictures in right now. But from what I've seen... It seems like it's taken an interesting tra- trajectory because in the first 30 pages, her father ends up going missing. At this point, supposedly he's been kidnapped. And along with his buddy uh, named Theo, he's been killed. So, for right now, while I'm reading the book, I don't know where it's going to go. So, I can't tell you how great I feel about the plot. I can just say what I'm reading. I will say, I was very reluctant to read it because... Being that I'm so fantasy oriented, I'm so stuck in my ways with fantasy. Like I'm always seeking the river, blue sky, and flying angels and shit like that. Because I'm always seeking that. I was kind of reluctant to read a book that was just all basic, um, good story, no fantasy involved, other than there being a white line, which I forgot to I forgot to name that, but. Although, really, you probably could see a white line in real life. That doesn't really seem like something that's impossible to find. Like, But, anyway. So, I was reluctant to read it. But, after reading the first 30 pages and so, I'm thinking I'm going to stick with it because the plot is interesting. Um, I feel like you guys... I'm not going to tell you you should check it out yet. I'm going to read it and let you know. But... So far as I'm reading it, I'm going to give it an 8 because it got interesting characters. The characters are very interesting. The central character is, you know, is somebody I can relate to to, a, to an extent because I can. I went through my phase of, not social reje- social rejection I went through, but the part I can relate to is having somewhat of an awkwardness at first with dealing with people because I went through a phase in my life where it was very hard for me to communicate with people. And I always wanted to, but it's just I had a phase where it was kind of hard because I always felt I was going to get judged. I was going to get called ugly because of my teeth or because of my lips or stuff like that. And you might have went through that. We all go through phases where we feel like people are judging us. So, other than that, I'm reviewing that book right now. But as far as I can say, I'm going to give it an 8. I'm not going to say you should go read it yet, but I will tell you that it seems very interesting. Um, And that's it for the reviews. Now for some announcements. Um, t- Next week, what was it? Next Thursday. Next Thursday, I'm going to be publishing an interview with Bruce Colfield. He was the author of six my uh, my seventh grade alien, my sixth grade alien. My six. It's hard to say the name correctly, but basically, any really good teen novel or children's book between 1960s and the 1990s, he probably has something to do with. He's a very prolific author. Very very prolific author. Published. Published internationally, internationally acclaimed, very, 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 very excellent author. I'm going to have him on Thursday. In good faith, in good faith, if I can have my technology up and running again, I'm going to interview Alan Phelan Jones on Tuesday, and we'll have the conversation that we were supposed to have on Thursday. And I apologize sincerely for for not delivering that to you because I was so. You guys don't know how happy I was to get in contact with him. And the funny thing about it was is that day. That I couldn't record the podcast because of the software. Even though I couldn't record the podcast, me and him talked for like an hour. We talked for like an hour about just the most mundane of subjects. We were talking about fiction. We were talking about different books. And we were talking about this and that. And it was a very interesting bonding experience. In fact, we had an um, interesting conversation about this. And I was talking to him about it. Is he had said that... Um, he was saying that when he first began his writing career, you know, he's written over 90 novels, 90 novels. And he was saying that when he first began his writing career, how he would he began just writing fan fiction. And what I told him was, is I don't believe that there's a such a thing as fan fiction. 
I believe that fan fi- I believe that in general, ninety eight percent, at least ninety eight percent of all books that are circulated around the world are fan fiction in a theory. Because if you, even if you take a J.R. Tolkien, J.R. Tolkien created a amazing, amazing composition of fantasy. But at the same time, it wasn't like he created the concept of fairies and elves. He didn't create that thought of an elf. He took that concept. He fan fiction that concept from people who wrote about elves and fantasies and dwarves and all of that in the Norse times, in the times when Norse mythology was a religion. He took that concept and fan fiction that. Even when you have a J.K. Rowling, she took the concept and fan fiction, the concept of a school, then fan fiction, the concept of witches. You know, it's, or even with the, even if you can go into um, to nonfiction with a Robert Greene who wrote the 48 Laws of Power, which strangely every dude who's had a dad that went to jail knows about. Um, that book, he fan fiction that book from other people's writings, other people's stories, other people's analyzations of what's going on in the world. Whether he took it from the art of war, whether he took it from writings by uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, whether he took it from writings or examples about how Galileo, it was inspired. So therefore, it is a fan fiction. And the reason I'm bringing that the reason we were talking about that is because there's always that that swinging accusation against people of how far about originality and stealing people's work, plagiarism, originality and plagiarism are always two issues with writers. And what I told him was, it's hard to be original as a writer because you always are getting, you're always getting so much um, creativity and just um, inspiration for other works. It's impossible just to, it's impossible just to say, I'm a writer and this is what I want to do and this is it. That's it. I'm done. This is all I want to do. It's impossible. It's impossible to just say I'm a writer and I'm not getting, exp- I'm not getting any inspiration from anywhere else in the world. You know, that's why. I wonder, like, the first real storytellers in the world, like, the first the first authors, the first prolific authors and writers, I really wonder, what was it like to be one of them? You know, what was it like to really have that moment where you were the first person who created a, a story? I really wonder, who was the first long-bearded, hairy, patch-footed man with arm, armpit hair growing up to his nose? Who sat in a cave by a fire and created the first fairy tale. And the funny thing about it is, I promise you, whoever it was, whoever did it, they probably didn't. They Everybody probably believed it because at the time they had never been used to the concept of a fairy tale. What do you think? What do you think about that? You know what? I'm going to ask you a better question. What was the first tale or story you ever told you might have a little sister you might have a little brother but I'm also curious to know what was the first story that you ever told to anybody I'm talking about a bedtime story that you told your little brother or little sister I'm talking about maybe you were in school and you went through English literature classes and which by the way I, I, I miss classes like that I miss that English literature and creative writing that was my favorite classes that and PE of course but when you went through those classes and you had to create a story or write something, what came out of your head instinctively? What did you write? What was the first story that you ever came up with? What was, you know, it's moments like that to cherish because a lot of the times you can find your sense of destiny in the riddled and uncaged creativity that you had as a child. In all seriousness, I'm not joking. I remember, I remember being a kid, being young and Creating stories and creating stories and creating stories, creating stories. You know, actually, the first story I ever created, truthfully, most of the time were just drawings. I used to draw all the time, so I would it just illustrate a lot of stories. And, you know, I always had this story. I'd always illustrate stories. I'd always illustrate stories. And then I started writing jokes. Then I started writing lines. You know, I've always been very creative in that aspect, so... It even shows in TV, it even shows my communication and even now to this day and even to my writing. I never lost that side of myself. So, you know, I always connect with that side. You'll find you'll find a lot of who you are in the first stories and in the first drawings that you did as a child. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that 
I'm not saying that if Stephen King goes back to his drawings as a kid, you're going to see a bunch of dead cats and people hanging from library as chandeliers. But I am saying that you can fight a lot of yourself at those times. Sorry, my nose is kind of stuffed up and I don't have any tissue in memory. That's why I'm talking like... <laughs> but also, um, also that's, I guess that's a good it for today. I don't have any much... No, no. Don't have much else to, to give you guys today. Also, to, um, on next, yeah, on Monday, I'm going to be releasing the Secret to Great Anime podcast. If you want to check that out, that happens to be if you're a fan of anime, you want to enjoy that. I'm going to be talking about this fantastic, fantastic franchise animated by anime called Berserk. Boy, it will blow your mind. Great anime. I'm going to be talking about that um, on Monday, so make sure you tune into that. Also, um, also, of course, um, I'm also going to be doing the Paradise Podcast, and I might do a special episode of the Par- by Paradise Podcast today. You know what I am? I'm going to do an episode of the Par- by Paradise Podcast today, too, as well. So make sure you go check that out. My name is JT. It's been a pleasure talking to all of you guys. You know, as always, it's much love when you guys step into the room, cut on your iPhone, your eye touch, and listen to me. Or your Samsung Galaxy, if you just happen to have bad taste of phones. My name is JT once again, and it was a pleasure.